everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Violet. And I'm Ruby. And today we're taking a look at a game called Wild Serengeti. Now, as a heads up, when you guys are older, like in your 30s and 40s, and I'm retired, I would like you all to buy me a trip to Africa where I can go out and take pictures of animals. I'm not kidding. Just keep this in mind and remember. Because I know you all be famous and successful, and I've always wanted to go there. Pay for it yourself. <laughs> Oh, okay. But well, remember dinner tonight? Pay for it. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, so anyway, Wild Serengeti is a game where you're going to go around and take pictures of animals or make videos. You're trying to get likes. It's Instagram, the game. But what the game really is, is put stuff on the board in certain patterns to get points. There's a lot of these games out there. I don't think this is even the first one of these kind of games you play where you put stuff out and try to get it. I'm trying to figure out how the photographer somehow moved tigers and lions to Teleported them. <laughs> There's no tigers in the game. But yes. Oh, right. But yes, how does he... Well, no, maybe you put food in different areas. And then maybe. they go and eat it. Mm. Yeah, but why would you... That would, well, like, make a whole horde of animals go towards it. And they'd just be fighting each other off. Don't try to figure it out. Special effects. Everything special effects. Here's how it plays. We'll be right back. There are two sides to the board, which is just basically has a different arrangement of terrain. And this game is all about completing cards. So here's a card, for example that's called an adjacency scene. This means I need to have an elephant next to the coyote here. And so the way that's gonna work is the elephant can be anywhere on the board, but you'll notice there's a little piece of terrain here that shows the coyote has to be on a rock. And so this coyote could be here or here or here, because those are all rock spaces, and that would work. There are other kinds of things where this scene here, for example, needs to have all these animals on very specific types of terrain. This one here, a straight line scene, needs to mean you need to have these animals in a straight line, which could be in either direction. There can be other animals in between them, but the zebra needs to be first, so on and so forth, and the antelope here would be last. There's also adjacencies here where all the animals here need to be around the giraffe. Now, when you complete one of these, sometimes they give you points, sometimes they give you symbols. Like for example, this one here simply gives you three banana symbols. This here gives you two leaf symbols. Sometimes they give you immediate things. This gives you one meat down here. And then sometimes they give you points. Like this one here is gonna give you points equal to the number of symbols you have of one of these three types. So if I got that three bananas card earlier, Three plus one, I would get four points when I play this card. So some of them are gonna give you straight up points, like this one's four points. Some of them give you symbols and points, and there's different combinations. The game takes place over six rounds. Kept track here. At the beginning of each round, you're going to get money, and that money can be left over from previous rounds. You can keep up the two coins from a previous round, and you're then gonna take a bunch of actions, and then once everyone passes, the round ends. At the end, at the beginning of these rounds here, four, five, and six, you'll be drawing a migration card. And what this does is it's going to draw and it's going to remove a bunch of animals from the board. And the different colors are basically just player counts. So there's going to be animals coming off the board these rounds. And then with these rounds here, you're going to have two of these randomly pulled from a whole pile. So there's the Jackal Joker here of the Zebra Maniac, and whoever has the most animals of that type on their cards, and there are some symbols that count wild towards this, is going to get victory points equal to the number of those animals that they have. So there's going to be, these are like an in inter-game scoring. Now on a player's turn, what they're going to do is they're going to pay one or two of their coins to place their worker on any spot here. Now if you're playing with less than four players, some of the spots will be locked and you can't go on them, but the spots are pretty simple. If you go to discover carn carnivorous, predators, large mammal scavengers, or migratory herbivores, you'll take one of the animals that's there and you can put that anywhere on the board. But it's pretty simple. If you go here, you swap two animals on the board. If you go here, you move an animal one to three spaces, which is just like one, two, three, something like that. And there can never be more than one animal in the same space. When you go here, you'll take a card from the scene pool. There are several of these cards face up next to the board. And here, you basically can wipe them all, put new ones out, and take one. That's it. Only one person can go to these small spots, 
you have to move on your turn to another spot and so the bigger spot here costs more but there can be as many people there as you want so players are going to take turns doing that as a free action on your turn you'll be able to complete one of these if you have the if those animals are on the board in that situation and like I said, the board is going to fill up with animals. There's going to be animals all over the place after a while in different spots as players are trying to complete their cards. Players will start with a bunch of these cards. There's a couple actions to get more of them. And you'll draw some in between turns. You draw three in between each turn. You keep one of them, but you can keep more of them. But you have to pay a coin for each extra one you keep. Some cards also give you tokens. You have meat tokens, a meat token. You can spend any time you want to simply move an animal one space. And these are special effects tokens, which you use to Photoshop your pictures. So basically, if I have a card that says, for example, this lion here needs to be on a grass terrain, and I can say, well, even though he's on a rock, he's actually on grass. And so you can spend one of these to get rid of that. There's also an alternate way to play the game, which is you will start with one of these special abilities, and these special abilities are going to give you points or some cool thing that you can do. Like, for example, the writer here gets a special effects or three points when completing a scene that has no icons on it. Here, get 15 points when you get this complete set together. Here, get bonus points depending on the number of scene cards in your video gallery upon the game collection. So the more cards you do, the more points you'll get at the end of the game. That's it. After six rounds, whoever has the most points is the winner of Wild Serengeti. So I am looking here at the deluxe version of this game. So some of the things are a little nicer than you would get. For example, the coins here are better than tokens. But I really like this thing. I don't like this. I don't like this big pride rock thing which just keeps track of rounds because it does not fit in a box, which means you need to build it every time you play the game, which I just find to be a bit of a pain considering all you're doing here is keeping track of the rounds. That's not that big of a deal. I mean, it shows you how much money you get. There's some information here. But you could just put the boards on top of each other, and I would have preferred that. Uh, the animals are fantastic. I mean, look at these. They're screen printed. They're screen printed on both sides. They look really cool. It's pretty easy to differentiate them from each other. This is going to be the big drawing point to the game, these animals. The board is fine. Like I said, it has two sides, so that's just kind of a different setup on you know, the, the, I don't really know that that makes that big of a difference. The cards themselves, here I have a problem with them. I don't mind the symbols, but I do mind, for example, this, my, this one has to be on the train. Look how little that is. Why is that so little? And in fact, why is this so little, the victory points here? Why is this tiny font used when there's different things on here? It should be much bigger, much easier to see. These symbols on the top are a nice size. Why are they so small in the middle? That just felt really weird to me. The only thing I could think of is that they had these longer ones and they wanted it to be all the same size. But even this, I felt, this feels like, oh, it's a formula. This plus two or that plus two or that plus two is the points, including this card. Fine, I guess. Um, I just was not thrilled with how these cards looked. And there's flavor text on these cards. That's also really small. And on many of the cards, Basically unreadable. You cannot read this here. In the, what, the, the, who knows. And that doesn't really help at all if I want there to be flavor in this game, which I mean, really, it's kind of an abstract game. I wish I could read these cards better. Here, I can read this one. Gazelle herds can have as many as 700 members. Okay, that's, that's, that's useful information. I should also mention, here's some hearts. These are likes. And at the end of the game, these will score points to you based on how many you've gotten. So that's another way to get points as the game goes by. But yeah, there's also a ton of these cards. It's a huge deck. And you will go through it because people will be able to wipe the cards many times. So you, sometimes you're looking for a very specific thing that's already on the board. Okay, so you were talking about the theme. You don't think the theme is real strong? I mean, barely noticed it, honestly. Scorecards, every once in a while you noticed, oh, right, we're actually making videos. They just seem like regular scorecards. And also, I'm surprised at how happy we are where we get 50 extra points for 10 likes. Well, maybe it's 10,000 likes. Or 100,000 likes, I don't know. Probably. Okay, but the... The components are cool. All the yeah. animals, it looks the board looks really neat as you're putting all these animals mm -hmm. out there. 
Do you feel like this game is... So it's not a cooperative game at all. Do you feel like... I was very annoyed when you kept moving my animals. This one is kind of unintentionally savage, where... Unintentionally savage. Put that on the box. <laughs> Where we move stuff, and then we're all yelling at each other, and we don't know what we did. There was definitely a lot of that, because you're, you have cars in your hand, and you're trying to move the animals to get to those spots. And you mess up other people all the time. <laughs> or sometimes, you move stuff, and then Violet goes, thank you. Yeah. And you put the car down, because someone just managed to make it the way you did it. That only happened once, and it was, and you did that for me. I think, it, well, well how, much, how often did it happen where we messed each other over? It was very annoying. Pretty I was often. trying to get this really good card, and I was so close, and you decided, oh, let me just move this <laughs> key important animal away. I remember one of the, you were so mad because we swapped something, and then it was almost the next round, so you had to fix everything. Right, and then you fix up. it, and someone else moves an animal in, or whatever else. <laughs> so the game is going to be very much, especially if you play more players. I would not play this with more than three, because if you're playing this with more than three, than two, honestly, you might as well not even look at the board until it's your turn. Because people are just throwing animals all over the place. And, or moving them. Or just messing you over in every way. And so, that's a that's a small bit of a problem. It's kind of fun to fulfill the cards, but that part is a problem. What do you think about the scoring and how the cards, some gave you just symbols and some gave you a token every turn? I thought the scoring was pretty simple and I liked how divor diverse it was. I almost won because of the hearts, but Ruby kept stealing my heart cards. <laughs> Stop smiling. Shut up. Um, yeah, so the, the, game, the game is, to me, the scoring is not as easy as it could have been. I might have cut one of the kinds of ways to score. Like, I would have cut one of the symbols or something like that. Um, but there's definitely a lot of scoring cards, and so you're going to be going through them and adding them to your hand and scoring them. Um, the worker placement is fine. You're just... Usually you can go anywhere you want. Sometimes someone's in your spot and you get irritated. You can either wait or pay the two coins to do it now. But coins are kind of precious. You will run out of them if you do that. Getting the meat tokens is super helpful and even more helpful are those special effects tokens. And I use yeah, almost, almost none of them. I never actually thought about them the entire game. Like, I didn't really focus on getting them from the cards because I'm like, I can just swap these around so I don't really need that. Sure. Um, what did you think about how long the game was? I mean, it's a pretty average long game that we normally play. Yeah, I mean, it's not like I felt, wow, this is taking forever. I don't think it took forever, but I thought it was longer than it needed to be. I felt like having six rounds, I would have preferred it to have been five rounds. Because honestly, you're not really doing anything different at the end. I also felt that the awards, you can see what they are. Like, oh, have the most giraffes. But if you don't get a lot of draft cards in your hand, you're not really going for that award. You can get those. There's some cards that are like wild towards any award, but I don't know. I, I, I thought this was an interesting game. It's definitely very beautiful. And you need to play with these special abilities. You really do because they give you, they make you feel a little bit different than everybody else. Oh, okay, I'm wow, going to be. Wow, thanks for telling them that they needed to use it when we didn't. The narrator here gained these points per set when you do the game completion. Or they just give you special ability. And there's even some that give you a, a special animal that no one else has. This is, uh, I think, the it's a mini expansion animal specialist. These are kind of cool. But um, what are your final thoughts on the game and rating? Honestly, uh... I actually really enjoyed this, um, despite all the negative stuff. I really liked this. I thought it was fun. By negative stuff, you mean Violet messing you over all the time? No, that was the opposite. Uh, <laughs> was it Daddy who did it? No, oh. I messed you up. <laughs> oh, right, you kept moving. <laughs> I stopped. Uh, this was a lot of fun, uh, at least in my opinion. Um, eight? Eight, okay. I like the game. Uh, yeah, like Daddy said, the rounds were like a lot of them and didn't need to last out that long. Although I'm kind of glad it did, otherwise I would not have gotten as many points as I did and would have been last place. But I like I, I like the game. I like the animals and the mechanisms, how you can move them around and how you can annoy people. But also I didn't like how and people And the fact that me. every single time we placed them on a water tile, we said they were drowning. <laughs> They're not drowning. It's like ankle-high water. Too bad. <laughs> All right, fine. Well, I'm pretty sure that end looks pretty deep. Okay, but then they're swimming. 
I would probably give it a seven. Alrighty, well, I'm actually going to give this one only a six from me. And I think there's a lot of problems with the game. I think the scoring cards could have been streamlined. There's a lot of these games put things out and score them. This one gets some bonus because instead of there being red and blue cubes, they're animals. That's cool. I like the animals. It, I mean, it, it does get close to being overproduced, but, you know, it's cool to have these animals. But, um, yeah, it's there's a lot of cool aspects to it. I'll play it again. I just felt that unless you're playing two players, a lot of what you do doesn't really matter. You're kind of just playing and drawing cards and hoping they work. So, but hey, that's why we're different. Uh, that's Wild Serengeti. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Violet. And I'm Ruby. And these are animals. Ah, they're all drowning. On land?